off on a little adventure tonight to go see Wild Bill, the president of the uh, Rare Air Volkswagen Club, right here in Pensacola, Florida. He's uh, building an engine for one of our friends. In fact, I put the engine into his uh, Beetle a couple years ago. There are some videos of that on my YouTube. We just built the motor for that this past weekend. We got it running and it sounds nasty loud. I mean, check that out. And um, he wanted to upgrade to a 1776 engine because he wants a little more power. And uh, he contracted Wild Bill to build a motor for him. But Bill just recently had his own engine in his bus blow up. His crankshaft actually busted in two, right in the middle next to the uh, center bearing. So essentially he had two twin cylinder engines <laughs> damn near running independently. If there was a little more clearances between the crank, it probably would have done that. But uh, yeah, it sheared off in the middle and it just, it, it, it broke in two pieces. He opened up the case and there was two cranks. So anyways, um, I'll show a little bit of that in this video. We're going to go stop over there and see what he's got and uh, we're going to make a, a video of it if it's something worth making a video of. So check it out. As always, you like my videos? Thumbs up. You know, finger f*** that thumb button. Um, go ahead and give me a subby down in the lower right hand corner of this video, the subscribe button, and hit the little dingle belly next to it, so that way you get updates every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, you guys. Appreciate it. I was dinking around with it. Here's how you know you're a bachelor. Right. Yeah, right there. Right. Volkswagen parts on a kitchen counter, just like my I house. I know. <laughs> Dude, look at over here. What we got over there? Next to all my drugs that I take. Oh, you got your lifters? Oh, yeah. <laughs> lifters? Um, no, what are those? Tappets? But I don't, yeah. Are they called tappets on no, a Volkswagen? Cam, cam followers. Cam followers, okay. I do not have uh, parts of my oh. Volkswagen. <laughs> I thought you were serious. <laughs> there was going to be some. Right <laughs> well, why not, right? Well, no. <laughs> this is my kitchen table behind you. There you go, just like mine also. I got all these boxes on it. What What you're looking at... It's familiar orange and blue. With this <laughs> and all the other parts, uh -huh. uh, about thirty-five hundred dollars worth of parts for Matt Small's seventeen seventy-six CC engine. Uh, you bought uh, everything brand new. Everything, yeah. everything. The only thing that won't be brand new is probably the tin. Uh, everything else is new. Uses old ones. Yeah, even a brand new oil pump. Oh, wow. And look, even a brand new distributor drive gear, wow, which well. doesn't come with a spring. There's no spring in there. No spring. Why the hell not? No, it's no time. No of all the things not to include. Yeah. Maybe it's something that I don't know. No, that's not. Still, that's, that's I've got stupid. It. You're going to have to open up a ballpoint pen and no, pop no, one no, out of there. It's a little stronger. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, um, yeah, as as I was dinking around with it, uh -huh. uh, I noticed that this bearing right here was a little far forward, so I took a screw, screwdriver and wedged it back. I knew I had it uh -huh. close to the hole, and, and as soon as I did, it went clunk, fell down, and then consequently the one in the rear fell down. Uh, okay. The main one, the split one, is easy because it's split. Yeah. You don't right. have to worry about that one. Right. This one's fairly easy because... Uh, Almost kind of a surprise they make them all that way. Yeah. What I didn't do, and what they recommend that you do, is to take a magic, you know, before you assemble the crank, take all of your bearings and set them in the dowel pins. Mm -hmm. And then right along the edge, take a, uh, a sharp edge or something and, and, and do a mark. And that would show where, when you finally get, get it onto the crankshaft, and when you're going it down in there, if you line up those marks on each side, that's exactly will center the hole mm -hmm. for the valve pin that's sticking up. So anyway, sixty-nine millimeter crank though, huh? Yep. Counterbalance. If you was gonna buy a new one, you might as well get what a seventy-two or something. Mm. Seventy-four. What's the biggest you could put in there without connecting the case? Trying to. I think it's like a seventy-two or seventy-four. I don't know. If you're going that route, you need to go with a bubble case. Well, anything bigger than that, definitely, because yeah. that's when you have to start cutting into meat. Well, yeah. up here. <laughs> and when you do that, that weakens that area right there. Yep, and, and I have then, a case at home that I'll demonstrate in this video that has a hole in the top uh -huh. of it. Uh, uh, the <laughs> bug just flew out of the engine. That's what the problem was. I had a bug that's in the it. uh, It's going to go in a bug. But the bubble case is reinforced <laughs> here and reinforced back behind the number three where it always cracks back mm -hmm. there. So 
Consequently, uh, he just wanted a, a standard case, and that's what he got. Well, it's of course, standard Brazil case. It's not the old German stuff, you know. Well, still, it's, it's well, we got uh, a lot of MP stuff in there, which better than you a know, forty, you know, fifty-year-old case that's been sitting around a long time anyway. Yeah, no okay. miles on it. Yeah, well, that and uh, it's been machined two or three times. You're right. <laughs> it's been rebuilt three or four times already. It's not the left bearing, in there. The bearings will last, you know, twenty-five hundred miles, and that's it. <laughs> but I got my assembly lube in there. Um, That's the red stuff I'm seeing. Right, and I'm getting ready to place the cam shaft in there, aligning up the two timing marks uh -huh. with the center mark on the cam shaft. And then uh, what what I was going to do was I was going to put the cam lube on the cam lobes uh, uh -huh. that protects uh, and breaks in the cam shaft uh -huh. uh, whenever the engine first starts, uh -huh. and uh, it'll meet up with with the Cam followers, which and is those important. Those are lubed also, right? Like well, I haven't. Yeah, the, yeah. I put uh, a similar lube in there, but there's some other lube that's going to go on the top of them. That's going to be inter interacting with the cam lobe as it goes around. Is it like a valve lapping stuff? Or well, no? it's it's what they send. There's two or three different types. See, it's mildly it's abrasive, abrasive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's got a little graphite and stuff in it, but uh, this says assembly lube, racing cams, motor assembly. Boy, that sounds important. But um, let's see, directions tells you to clean all the parts thoroughly and apply a thin film, <coughs> lubricant, and okay. And lubricant. Excess, avoid excessive handling of lube surfaces after application. <laughs> That's kind of porno. Hooty hooty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it says provides positive protection against scuffing, uh -huh. scour scouring, and cooking. Stops you from chafing your willy. That's right. But um, anyway. <laughs> so what we're doing, we're trying to put the uh, flywheel on? No. You said something about dowel pins? No, we're trying to put the crankshaft in. Crankshaft? Yeah. Okay, because you were saying dowel pins. I was thinking these guys. No, the dowel... Because if there's eight of them, sometimes the case, they're a real pain in the ass to get the flywheel on. I thought no, that's what you were doing. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the case pins. Case pins. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Because you have you have to lock in your 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 bearings, your main bearings uh -huh. in there, or they'll they'll rotate on you. Yeah, and Worse then the engine will bind when you torque it down. <laughs> and, and because the dowel pin is pushing up on, and it, it completely ruins the the bearing. You have to get another bearing. Oh, yeah. Because it, 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 it crush it. Yeah. yeah. And, you're, and you're done. And yeah, if you want zero oil pressure, yeah, you can run like that. Yeah. There you go. You're running without it. Yeah, that's and Don't worry, we got the oil light on, no problem. Keep yeah, running. Yeah, now, I was watching a video on YouTube uh, just the other night of a woman that was riding with her friend, and, and the engine on her Harley started to lose power, so she pulled over, and she's cursing and swearing. This thing is acting up again. She says to her friend, The oil light is on. Is that a problem? He goes, Oh, we'll get oil at the gas station. <laughs> She gets on the interstate, blasting down the interstate, passing everybody. She's running for about 10, 15 minutes. No and all of a sudden, the engine goes... <laughs> and then she starts cursing. Swearing. Things getting loud. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> you see the smoke coming off of it. <laughs> what is so ironic about that is most Harleys have got these huge saddlebags on them. You can put like... A Walmart five uh, quart uh, yeah. jug in, in yep, each, yep. each one. You can go of grocery them. shopping with them, right? Actually, hers wasn't. It was an older '70s model right. Sportster. It was a lot smaller. Anyway, she blew the motor up. She wasn't paying attention to the oil light. And as you remember, Matt, mm -hmm. you know better than anybody else. Don't run with the oil light on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what happened two engines ago. One of the ones that I put together for him. <laughs> I'll put oil in it when I get home. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oil or generator light on there. Anyway, yeah, yeah, definitely, especially on type one. Yeah, type one, you're you're toast. Uh, yeah, you're finished. Type three, threes and four. You can get away with the generator light on for a little while. Yeah. I ran it actually for a couple days. Yeah, you can go down. Generator light on a battery just kept right on going. Yeah, as long as it got a little spark. Didn't run it at night though. Lights were off. Nope. <laughs> I ran it for a few days driving back and forth to work. That happened to me <laughs> coming back from Texas. Um, <clears throat> uh, alternator went out in the tunnel. I was that close to getting home. 1700 mile round trip mile trip 49 more miles to get home and the light started getting dim like in a movie theater yeah yeah ready to come on i started and to get that orange got glow right again and they got dim right now also it was trying to work well it was had a little, little something it was a voltage there. regulator okay it wasn't actually the alternator thank goodness gotcha the voltage regulator for some reason or another was was spitting out whenever you got a high rpm mm -hmm. but it would actually charge if you pulled on the side of the road and let it idle for a minute and that would give you a little more headlight I was driving in increments. It took me 
almost three hours to get home from Mobile doing that. Ugh. Leapfrog in about three o'clock in the morning. Dogs and wife in the car, so <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> um, well, let's see what we got going on here then. Yeah. Start slapping the puppy together. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, ham in. And what I need to do, first of all, yeah, I'll use it. Look at this. I gotta poke a hole in this right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for a wine, I don't drink wine anyway. No? Well, a little wine's good for you. Uh, whoa, uh, oh, this is nasty. Nasty. See, you got a blue dishwasher. Well, no, it's the. I, I know. I actually I installed one for somebody a couple years ago, and they're kind of a wealthy people. And after I got done installing it for them, um, they left me with the key, and I left the blue p plastic on it on purpose. <laughs> they came home, and they're like, why'd you give us a blue dishwasher? And I was like, well, you know, I wanted to do something artistic for your kitchen. And they were so mad, I was like, just peel the plastic off. It was just a joke. And at that point, they thought it was the funniest thing oh, ever. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you really had us going. I was like, yeah, I know. I always leave the plastic for the customer to peel off. They know it's a brand new item at that point. French laugh. Oh, ho, oh, ho. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. You're more French than I am, I guess. Am I? Ho, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, so I'm applying this by hand. God, that's going to make a nice racing strike. Especially if you eat it. Mm. <laughs> I think I would have had that supper, you know. Got a whole refrigerator full of frozen dinners. There we go. Delicious. And I got some leftover pizza from Hungry Howie last night. Actually, it's two days old. And Skeeter and I got some Papa John's tonight. She wanted it. It's not bad. She wanted okay, it. Okay, now I, I got a cam lube. Cam lobes. Lube, that's hard to say. Cam lobes. Lube. I got my finger lubed. Ooh, that don't sound right. Well, maybe I should not turn that's around. Nasty. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna put a nice thin coat as they recommended on there. I'm not sure exactly how much that is, but that looks like, it's like a, a nice thin coat to me. Thin coat. And it's thorough. And it's a good way to get it off my fingers too. And I gotta save a little bit for the um, lifters on the other side. Now, I there's a little trick that you can do. You, when, because the other case half is going to slide down, and the lifters are going to be where they'll fall out. Uh -huh. You can take a clothespin. They make they make these things that'll hold the lifters in place. You can take a clothespin and uh, reverse it and set it in there, and then uh, keeps it from sliding out hmm. whenever you put the case on. And that is that. Yeah. All right. Chewing gum. Yeah. Wad it in there. <laughs> well, it'll work, but it won't work for long when you try to run it. Okay, now I need some super lube. Super lube? That's it. You think I'm kidding? Look. It's ultra slick engine assembly lube. There you go. And that's made by Primitix. Lube again. Yeah, I'll put some there for the cam. This will... Um... On the initial start of the super loose stuff, provide a little bit of protection until all starts circling. Yeah. Around. I don't want to get too much down on this end because I've got to put the cam plug in there before I put the case half together. Now, by getting the case half together, I'll have the, the what's called short block assembly. Mm -hmm. And the next thing to do that we'll have to do is to set the deck height. And we'll install. Uh, number one and number three cylinders and pistons without the cylinder head on it. But we will take the cylinder heads to get a, a CC them to make sure uh, we can get the reading didn't, of how many CCs it's displacing. Didn't know you had to do deck height with stock cylinder or um, stock crank, I should say. Yeah, well, you want to do that because your compression ratio could end up being 15 to 1 if you're not careful. Oh, that's awesome, actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 30 horsepower at idle. Yes, if you could afford aviation <laughs> gasoline. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that height was necessary on that. I thought the cylinders were all the same length, except for when you start going with long stuff, you know, for the strokers. Nope. But, that's, uh, that's that near compression ratio. Unless you're using weird rods or something, you know. Uh, well, the only thing to worry about this is counterbalance strength. And those rods, they're not H rods, but they are. They are. 
different from stock, that's for sure. Stock length, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ideal thing. Ideal. In order to get this gear synchronized so that the loads yep. are rotating the and dots. opening and closing the valves, you have one dot there, one dot. and it's going to be really hard to see on this because it's so dark. But see there's two. Here. Yeah, I see them. Two marks right and there. They're on the teeth. So what I'm going to do is rotate the engine around just a little bit. Get that. I'm trying to keep from getting that damn stuff all over me. Do you lube the gear also? W what's that? No. You, no? Well, I, I, I will put a little dab in there. This is where you have to get down. Yeah, you about got it. I can see it from here. Yep. You've got to put the dot. <laughs> well, that's the thing. There, there, it's not going to be... Oh, crap. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can get my hands in there. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Okay, you can see as that thing rotates it? around, that dot will be in between. That is really hard to see. I don't know if you're going to have enough. No, I got it. I see it. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I definitely see it. Now, the next thing I've got to worry about is when I put the oil pump in there, the uh -huh. tang of the oil pump will fit in there. You got to make sure... You got the right model oil yeah. pump. Yeah. <laughs> so everything according to, I've been told, is going to work because MP yeah. said so. Earlier late model cam yeah. pump, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why they even changed that. Mm. Oh, cool. All right, now I'm going to take some of that uh -huh. super lube. Super glue. Super lube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, do have, we do have tech assist going on. There we go. Um, That's JJ, right there, buddy. Is that the right stuff right there? I think it is. All right. Thank you. <laughs> do we have a second opinion? <laughs> Bye. You guys will see me installing some drop spindles on a beetle this week, and this is what it looked like after the job is right. done. Slam to right the brain. There. <laughs> oh, that stuff's stuff like honey, huh? Yes. It don't taste like honey. Let's try it. Nope. It tastes oh, like pass, raspberries. Pass. <laughs> yeah, Raspberry it's, flavor. It looks like cough syrup. <laughs> Something from the Waffle House. Oh, God. <laughs> the Waffle House. Mm -hmm. You go there or you eat that. Either way, you're getting the shits. I'll tell you what. You want a good thing, man. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's about as far as I'm going to get with this right now. All right, see you. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> there, there is a note of interest there. Uh -huh. The discharge side of the oil pump, when it's installed, normally there's a hole there. Yep. Okay, it's plugged off. Okay, it's plugged off. Flush. Yeah, it's fairly flush. It's, it's yeah. indented, that's fine. It, it, it's, yes, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's not, not going to hurt it. Just the way the light hits, it looks like it's yeah. sticking up. Oh, no. I, <laughs> that's why I took a file to, you can see where I, can, I took yeah. a, a file, and I got it down to where it, yep. it looked good. Good. Um, that's for the full flow part of it. Yep. Uh, that will uh, back up the oil pressure inside of the oil pump and shoot it back towards the cover. The cover has got a spout, uh, spout coming yep. out of it, and boom. And oil goes, goes off to where the it needs to go. Oil cooler and filter and whatever you got, and then back into back the in. case. Yeah, and um, Matt is also going to be installing something else that's going to uh, provide a little bit of extra protection, if you will. Oh, deep sump. Yeah, deep okay, sump. there you go. Three and a half quarts. Oh, and he's lowered. Let's see how long that lasts. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> He's really low. <laughs> I know. I don't know. He might. Yeah, he might want to think twice about that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm I mean, he can always take it off later, but it's a pain in the ass. No, uh, <laughs> he can also get his money back right now. But yeah, that's it's, true. It's eighty bucks. I mean, yeah. eighty bucks is eighty bucks. So that that he still has he still has to get a nothing uh, gay about eighty bucks. Yeah, all of this stuff <laughs> from Just Bo uh, in uh, Past Christian 
Yes, Friends of ours. Yes, he's a club member. Oh, is he? Yes, he is. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. From a long time ago. But I got the other ha uh, case half here. Okay. <laughs> you got some new heater vents? Oh, man, I don't He to... doesn't even use the things. I know. <laughs> That's another thing to return, I guess. Yeah. Because I think his uh, heater channels are shut. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember him having heat. Yeah, I have to think about that. Hmm. But his, his jugs, his 90.5 jugs is there. Uh -huh. um, I, before Wednesday, I'm going to take uh, two of them out that's already been designated. And um, they are going to be cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> My boys. Uh, they're going to be cleaned up. and uh, it's, that's, that's what we're going to use to set the deck height. You have to have one on each side. Uh -huh. So, that's about it as far as what Mr. Bill's going to do tonight. I'm tired. Oh, no. Not going to yeah. drop the case on there? Uh, mm, I thought that's what you brought me out uh, for. Uh, I see. Change your mind, huh? No, i got to figure out what i got to yeah. do. You need more rum and coke to do it. Mm. <laughs> I just don't feel like messing with it tonight. Uh, yeah, that's the way I felt today. I didn't yeah. touch a damn thing at home except YouTube videos. What, what, what I'll do tomorrow night is um, I'll, I will... Uh, Go ahead and get all of the nuts and bolts and everything squared away, and it'll go down. And notice I got my O rings on there. You got that's a type one case got the O rings in oh. there. Hmm. I'm not sure if there's two to go there or not. I have to look. I don't think there is. Anyway. Uh, Little things I'm learning. I never put a case together before. Only top end. Mm -hmm. But this is all brand new stuff, so that's why I'm doing it in here with relatively clean. Yeah, I know your hands aren't filthy. Stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Notice I'm not sweating and, sw and swapping. Right. So I'll put a little more of that in there before I seal it completely because I know the gravity of the feet some of it is. But that's all it is on the inside of a Volkswagen case right there. You got your crankshaft, your camshaft, <clears throat> your, your cam followers. Now I will put the distributor drive gear in there before mm -hmm. I seal it up. That way I can actually position this number one cylinder in the firing position. In the right position so yes. the damn thing is correct for a change. Yeah. Right <laughs> and you can actually set your in play right now too. Can you? Yes. I thought the case had to be torqued down for then. No. It can, it, can, it can be done. It can be done. Yeah, I thought you had to be torqued down because everything changes dimension a little bit when you smash well, it. What changes on the dimension is the, when you tighten the flywheel down. This, this part of it is going to be there, but the flywheel, the, the, the thrust right here, mm -hmm. that's what you're adjusting right yeah. now. So, and that's, that's another thing too. You want your, if you, you know that you've got the proper, proper, um, Conrad, uh, bearing in there mm -hmm. and properly lubricated everything if it drops slowly when you release it okay oh really yeah this one is like there it is yeah no that, that's good news i didn't know that yeah. yeah i'm learning a lot of little things here about these uh, the counterbalance crank will uh cause less vibration uh let you crank out a few more rpms but actually uh depending on your cam and carburation and ignition and your exhaust in the weight of the vehicle and a few other factors, timing, um, the amount of horsepower you're going to make is going to quit at a certain point. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it sounds good when you're tacking up, you know, 7,000 RPMs, would you really stop? There's no more power, right? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. And probably not even, actually. 3,500-ish yeah. starts yeah. to lose, yeah. It depends, like I said, on all of those factors. Yep. Depends on the cam you've got, the kind this, of flow you're getting. This is an Engel 110 cam. 110? It's one... Maybe one notch ahead of a, of a stock cam, you know, one one little upgrade up. I think the 100 is. You're that's the right cheater that. cam. Yeah, that's the cheater <laughs> cam. That's the one people use for, that's why I always think of it as being stock. Yeah, it's a cheater cam. Good, I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, too. yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and then anything after that, you start getting to yeah. exotics, and then if you change the rocker arm geometry, which is another thing that uh -huh. we're going to have to do, make sure... You got the right angles. Yep, I got to be at that. The angles. So, yeah. Anyway, I am so glad that that, that dropped in like it did. Uh, they have to be locked. There's little steel parts, um, a piece down there that this that this valve 
I'm in bow. Bearing. I'm so tired. This bearing fits in and uh, keeps it from rotating uh, and keeps it uh, in the right position so that when you tighten the case, uh, it doesn't squash into the bearing. Jeez, there's not much to this at all, and of course I've got the books at home. This is the distributor drive gear, and of course the distributor drive gear goes goes in here. I put it in there, but I got to clean it up first. All of these things come with like a thin layer of, of preservative on them, so they don't rust while they're sitting on the shelves waiting to be sold. And so you got to get that preservative off uh, mm -hmm. to allow proper yeah, proper like lubrication. A, a mineral there. oil or something. Right. Now, uh, if you put that distributor drive gear in there without a distributor on it, if you happen to reverse the engine. It will chew that brass up, and then you know what you got to do. Well, that's actually with the drive-in, mm -hmm. without the distributor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got. And, and then you're replacing the old brass gear. Is yes. that a brass one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's discolored it's color. Yeah. Because uh, when we heated it up, put it on. Oh, okay. Uh, James Berry insisted on ten thousand degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> As soon as you run it, it'll get it'll get nice and gold shiny again. <laughs> Not nobody, for the mantle, but you never see, see it. it. <laughs> you never see it well, unless it's in your oil. Unless you have to tear it down again. But, uh, yeah, here's your oil slinger um, um, headed in the right direction. If you go that way, it it just it will pulls oil away. <laughs> it will not work. And around around here um, uh, is where your pulley fits on, mm -hmm. and on the outside of the pulley, it's grooved and spiral screwed. cut. Yeah. But if you put a sand seal mm -hmm. in there, which the Type Force came from the factory with it, like you cut all of those grooves off of the end of the pulley. Okay. Like on a lathe. Yeah, on a lathe. Interesting. Right, right, and get it to a certain thickness so that it'll fit inside of this pressed-in seal that goes in there now, and that will uh, allow it to. Um, Keep dirt and rain and any other thing from getting hmm. to, into the engine on this side. Plus the sand seal. If you've got a high performance engine, sometimes if you turn real, real high RPMs, it'll 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 blow out an oil mist from around this. Okay. Oh, the case but if you put the seal in there, it'll keep it from doing it. I had to do that on my 2110. I was getting this fine mist. I couldn't figure out. And it and fine mist turns into large droplets, just like yeah, rain. it builds up, right? And, 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 <laughs> and it looks like they got a massive oil leak, and everybody sprayed all over everything. I'm, sure, I'm trying to find out where is it. Oil cooler? No, it's not there. Yeah, by factory, there actually is no seal there at all. And if you tip that case up while yes. there's oil in it, it'll, yeah. it'll leak all over the place. It, I except, found that out the hard way. Ex except if you have a Type Four engine, Type Four came with mm -hmm. with the sand seals in them. That and full float. Plus reinforced block and everything else is nice on it. And it's All I think you got to do is make sure your fan doesn't come off so it locks up one half of the crankshaft and the other crank half of the crankshaft is turning and then snaps it. <laughs> I, I, I talked about that in the video on the way oh over here, actually. <laughs> well, actually, if you go down to Don <clears throat> Rose Garage, I took that crankshaft mm -hmm. and found a piece of wood and I took a uh, safety wire. Mounted it up, did you? Yeah, separated. So now it's a trophy. Separated. It could be the yeah. best engine you ever made. <laughs> <laughs> well, not my best well, hopefully engine. you get Rusty back together for oh, October. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to enter two engines in one vehicle yeah. unless it's mounted, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it kind of could be yeah. mounted. <laughs> I, did, I did see at Buckingham one year a guy had an air-cooled uh, Volkswagen engine in the rear of a Caddy mm -hmm. and a regular engine in the front. Cadillac. Yeah. Hmm. No. Uh, the Volkswagen pickup. They call them caddies. For oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, had a diesel engine in the front and an air-cooled gasoline engine in the rear, and they were both functional. How he did that, I don't know. Hmm. It was a weird. lot of different ways to do it, but yeah, yeah that's weird. interesting. Very weird. Four-wheel so, drive. By the way, <laughs> you want to close this one up? This is about it. Yeah, that uh, uh, spiral that's on that um, pulley that goes in there right. acts like an auger, from what I understand, and yeah. pushes air into the engine yeah. to stop that from leaking there. So it's it's, it's counteracting the uh, forces of the, the inside of the case, the crankcase pressure. Which is why you have to have crankcase ventilation. Yes, yeah, so you got to ventilate. If you don't, you're going to be blowing uh, valve cover gaskets, yep. uh, your push rod 
tube seals, everything. And some of the aftermarket pulleys sometimes, they don't have the right. spiral cut in it. If you don't pay attention, some of them are even cut the wrong way. <laughs> so it'll draw exactly. out. So it um, goes everywhere. Uh, one other, one other uh, uh, comment about the uh, crankcase ventilation. Uh, you, you also get a little bit of blow-by as the engine gets older from the from the rings, mm -hmm. and also, uh, believe it or not, uh, you you will get uh, from the um, valve guides, valve guides yeah. as, they, as they wear out. So, yeah, that's why a lot of guys will take and vent the valve covers, and uh, it's a good idea have anyway. A, have a better better vent ventilation system, and they'll have it a separate like a collector up there in case it pumps oil up there or mm -hmm. oil mess, eventually when you turn the engine off, it'll, it'll precipitate it'll, out. It'll go back out mm -hmm. and into the case. Um, but anyway. There it is. All right. Man. Hopefully we're around for part two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the engine will be running soon. There we go. Well, we're wrapping it up, so thumbs up if you like this video. This is Wild Bill VW on YouTube. I'm trying to get him to put more videos on his YouTube. He keeps putting them up on his Facebook instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go over there to his channel, give him a subscription, give us both thumbs up on this video, click the little subscribe button down there in the corner, and ring the little dingle belly next to it to get updates every time we put up a new video. So Wild thanks Bill so much VW. for watching. There he is. Wild yeah. Bill VW, he's the man. And a drop spin boy. That's JJ. He's our tech assist. <laughs> And the other two are <laughs> resting right now. You turbo's in the Later. Okay, man.